Siegfried. Siegfried of Denzel. A Knight of the Order of the Flaming Rose is an idealist who adheres to the Order's rules but is not devoid of common sense. Polite and open, he is unlike many of his other brothers from the Order in that he is not prejudiced. He is undeniably courageous and demonstrated this. Didn't we read this? I feel like we did. <laughs> this when uh, we descended alone into the uh, sewers to fight the cocktrees. Yeah, okay. Uh, Siegfried and I defeated the cockatrice together. The knight proved both polite and a skilled swordsman. I feel like we read all of that. I don't, I don't know. So we've got uh, Billy Mays here. Uh, uh, Vincent Mays. Vincent Price. Nah, you know, it's one of those. <laughs> all right. Um, he's captain of the city card. Uh, Vincent Mays was one of the few who knew that I was going into the sewers to kill the cockatrice, and that I could only leave by the exit where I encountered the Salamandran bandits. People say that it's impossible to get in touch with Maze at night. After dark, the captain vanishes into thin air. Guess we'll have to figure that one out. Alright, we got Vizima here. I acquired a pass, which allows me to pass through the gates into the city in spite of the quarantine. Vizima, the capital of Tamaria, is the largest city in the kingdom and is located on the shore of Lake Vizima, at the intersection of important trade routes, one of which is a waterway. Owing to a developed network of roads, the city draws considerable profit from trade. By King Foltis's order, the city is governed by Burgermeister Velarad. Vizima is divided into three large districts. The poorest one is the Temple Quarter, where St. Libiota's Hospital and the Cloister of the Order of the Flaming Rose are located. The Trade Quarter is home to the wealthiest and most important inhabitants, and both the Town Hall and the Marketplace are situated there. The oldest part of the city, Old Vizima, has been recently converted into a ghetto for non-humans. Temple Quarter. The Temple Quarter of Vizima is strangely reminiscent of a quarrelsome, dirty prostitute who, despite her disagreeable appearance and personality, remains somehow alluring. This may be because of the uncomplicated, illicit entertainment it offers. Always a temptation. Beggars, shady characters, scowling poor folk, frustrated non-humans, and of course, ladies, occupy every corner. Recently, Vizima's Temple Quarter was cut off from the rest of the world by the threat of an epidemic. The few city guard patrols that come here try not to venture too far into the quarter's dark alleys, where brutal deeds take place each night. At the center of Vizima's Temple Quarter stands St. Lebiota's Hospital, the only place of solace for the poor and plague victims. Alongside the hospital stand the headquarters of the Order of the Flaming Rose, which tries to combat local crime. And we have the detective's house. As in many large cities of the north, in Vizima, one can enlist the services of a private investigator, an expert in sensitive issues, discreet investigations, and tracking suspects. Detective Raymond Marlowe is available at his office day and night. All right. We get anything for that? No. Okay. We just picked up uh, random, uh, random stuff from it. We didn't get anything else. Codringer and Fenn, a famous pair of lawyers who ran a firm and Dorian until both partners died tragically under mysterious circumstances. At its height, the firm was retained by people from all over Tamaria. If someone had difficulties, uh, troubles, problems, they went to Codringer and Finn. So the firm's clients quickly received proof of dishonesty and malpractice by their business partner. They could count on receiving credit from a bank without insurance or security. As one of a long list of creditors, they would be the only one to exact what was due from the company declaring bankruptcy. Their son would be released from the dungeon and cleared of all charges based on either 
irrefutable evidence or lack thereof. Because if the evidence existed, it disappeared mysteriously, while the witnesses retracted any earlier testimony. The wife's lover or daughter or the daughter's suitor would suffer complicated fractures in three limbs, including at least one upper one, all as a result of unfortunate accidents. And an enemy with a grudge or some other troublesome individual would soon stop being a nuisance, often vanishing into thin air. That's how Codringer and, Fern and Finn worked. Codringer and Finn are actually a, a couple of characters that appear in the books. Um, definitely worth reading up on them, and uh, their mysterious circumstances are expounded upon in the, uh, in the books. We'll get to know a little bit more there. <laughs> I'm not sure where we got the information about Codringer and Fen just now. It might have been from reading about Vizima, but uh, it's kind of interesting that it showed up. Yeah, we don't have any new formulae. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I thought we might get a monster because of the monster outside, but no such luck. Um, we do have quests. Prison break. Uh, Siegfried gave me the key to the door leading out of the sewers. Vizima... And all of its dangers await outside. I need to recover my things as soon as possible. Safe haven. The merchant, Ludvarden, apparently has some work for a witcher. I can find the merchant on the dike, where he conducts business in daytime. If I mention our mutual friends, I will easily get the assignment. Well, I mean, we uh, we caught up with Ludvarden uh, while we were at the no-name town a little bit earlier. Uh, and we're selling him some stuff. So perhaps we can uh, we can get his favor again. Um, and the dike we uh, we triggered a cutscene by accident <laughs> pretty recently. Suspect Vincent Mays. I suspect the captain of the city guards, Vincent Mays, might be working for a czar. Uh, I will try to wring the truth out of him. All right. So I guess we're gonna have some suspects. On, uh, on who might be uh, the one that sent the assassin for us, even though the professor technically saw us down there and might have known. The Algo contract. Calcstein is going to pay uh, cash. Um, the Beast of the Sewers. I killed the cockatrice and took its head as proof. I should see Vincent now. The Crown Witness. Raymond told me that the city guards caught a member of the Salamanders. I need to get him and... Or I get to him and learn as much as I can about the salamander. I should ask Jethro, the prison guard, where he is held. The dog catcher of Vizima. The grave digger wants me to eliminate Vizima's stray dogs. Alright. Echinops. Gardener post it for killing the Echinops. Wolf contract. Jean Pierre is buying wolf pelts. Vizima confidential. It seems that the salamanders have a secret agent who set a trap for me. I must find out who he is. First, I should interrogate the prisoner being held by the city guards. And finally, Witcher Secrets. I've begun an investigation into the identity of the Salamandra leader. I'm working with Detective Raymond, who could help me learn who is working with Azar Javid. Maybe his associates will lead me to the man himself. I suppose we'll find out. All right, screw you, Rams meat. Guess we're not talking to you anymore. Got a barrel back here, though. A whole bunch of thugs in here. Got a waitress. What's up, waitress? Hello. Fancy a meal? Or have you another reason for coming? What other reason? There's a comfortable bed out back. What'll it be? Wow, did you just invite me to the comfortable bed out back? <laughs> I mean, the last person that I spoke to had a, uh, a ghost contract for me when I came into a tavern, and uh, I had to go defeat the ghost. It was very harrowing. <laughs> Anything uh, interesting happening here besides you inviting me to a bed? Anything interesting happening here? Boys fight each other. Some wager on the outcome. Sometimes they beat up visitors. Altogether boring. Ah, uh, you don't like fisticuffs? <laughs> Let's go out back. Sure, why not? Geralt can uh, find all of his trading guards and uh, start trading them to the local folk. Let's go out back. I was jesting. 
My man would tear off my head if I went with you. Maybe we should risk it. No. He beat me so badly recently, I spit out a tooth. Uh, maybe I can do something about him. <laughs> Show me your wares. Alright, so we could get some, uh, some alcohol here. That's only 20. I may want to buy some alcohol. The great thing about buying all of this uh, really cheap alcohol is you can turn it into more expensive alcohol very easily. I may very well do that. I won't be buying any of the 30s, though. Yeah, give me all your stuff. Cool. I'll spend a few hundred bucks on some alcohol. Just like real life. <laughs> Let me have a sniff. I prefer some Baileys, though. What's this? I talk so smooth all the wenches draw near. Those kind of uh, surprised that we can't uh, we can't take anything from Coleman's corpse over here. I figured there would uh, you know be some kind of clue or something that we could take besides arrows just being in him. You fight like a lass. Hey guys, I was trying to watch you. <laughs> Your mom. Um, let's see. So I'm guessing uh, Monroe bruise over here is probably our fighter uh, as he jumps out of bed because we came close he's like are you gonna fight me fight me fight me no uh, can I can I go for this chest I can I'll take it all right well, I'll take that put it away a little bit later um yeah, we'll, we'll go around and uh, fight a few of these guys. Actually, Butterbean is probably our uh, our fighter over here. Want a beating, stranger? We fight for money. I fight for other things, but, uh, you know, fun doesn't seem to be on the board for you. You look very depressed. Um, Let's see, how far can we go with you? Can I get, like, 25 out of you? No way, not me. All right. Want a beating straight? Let's try 20. Oh, kick your ass and make money doing it. 20 we'll sounds see. good. All right, buddy. Hey, don't hit me in the back, little jerk. Hit you one more time. There we go. I figured that was all it would take. Give me that coin. Oh, that pays for uh, one of the uh, bottles of hooch we just got. You win, Wanderer. Take your coin and leave me be. Who wants to get slapped? All right, who's next? Wanna beat things? Sure do. Since you're starting with 10, I'm guessing you probably only do 20 as well. Oh, we'll see. You fight like a lass. I'm itching to hit someone. Come on. Just one more hit. There we go. Who wants to get slapped? <laughs> I like that his who can fight speech bubble over him had a, a lowercase i in it. <laughs> you win, I fight? Take your coin and leave me be. Greetings, Whitey. Got money. Want to fight? Wow. Race as much? <laughs> Ooh, you started 20. Can I get like uh, 40 or 50 out of you? Try 40. Should be an interesting fight. All right. Ready? Bring it on. Hit me, chicky. I did. I did hit you. I'm going to hit you again. <laughs> Keep on hitting you. Maybe I'll have to make you hit yourself, too. It would be fun. Oof. You get me now. There we go. You 
fight like a last. Can I get the last hit in? There we go. Who wants to get slapped? It's like free money back here. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's horny. <laughs> Random. You're not bad. It's no shame losing to the white-haired one. Alright, uh... I think these two are fighting each other, so they'll probably not fight me. No challengers? I'm itching to it, son. Your mother sucks dwarf cock. Wow. Okay. At least it's bigger than yours. <laughs> what? You an experienced fist fighter? Smacked a few. Why? I defeated Fat Fred, so I'm looking for another opponent. You take issue with Fat Folk? No, I just wanted to fight people that were really good at fighting. No. You're fighting or are you running home to Mama? What's the wager? 75 arons. Alright. I'm Give in. it. Let's do it. See what you got. I'm itching to get some. Wow, that took out a lot from him. Okay, now he's just like, just slow swinging at me. <laughs> it's doing a lot of damage here. Can I, can I swing, please? There we go. We still Come on. All right, Geralt, stop taunting him. Can, can you move? Okay. Wow, he's a. Uh, he's doing a good bit to me here, Geralt. Can you stop taunting this guy and just actually hit him? Man. <laughs> Geralt just kept taunting him. <laughs> it was not doing good for me at all. <laughs> that was a close one. I'm saying double. Well, maybe I you shouldn't win. drink. Choose. Two bottles of Mandrake Cordial, a golden necklace, or 150 orans. Hmm. Mandrake Cordial. I think that's just alcohol, honestly. Golden Necklace might be worth more. I feel like the necklace is probably the uh, the best option here. I don't think Mandrake Cordial is going to give us anything amazing. Yeah, give me that necklace. The necklace. Here! Can I fight you again for the rest of the stuff? My head. I raised the mob and I miss. Perhaps I retire. Ooh, we leveled up too. Let What's up, Monroe? Sleep. You're not, you're not gonna talk Let to me. Let me sleep. All right, fine. Jeez. Who wants to get slapped? All right, anyone else in here? I should leave. Should you? I saw a fault test. Let me take my mother's life. Did you now? What are you looking at? Your ugly face. I heard serious trouble brewing. I'll buy some cheap powder. My customers. Damn squirrels! Assaulting convoys like during the war. One who has sickness. Under which? <laughs> well, maybe you should try sleeping with them all. You'll figure it out. The guards are preparing around. Good thing I'm a witcher. I don't have to worry about that kind of thing. All right, let's go ahead and put some stuff away. Damn it! Whatever you do, don't bet on the boxing. It's rigged. What do you want? Is it rigged? Because I just won all of it. Alright, let's store this torch away. Um, I'll store the necklace as well. For now. At least until I can find a jeweler. All this hooch. Cool. Generating plenty of stuff. Somehow, we, uh, we've ended up with slightly less money than when we came in here, but a lot more items. I feel like it was worth it.